Hello, I'm Leighton. Welcome back to my knitting diary. Um, it's been quite a long time since I made my last video. Um, who knew that starting a big project video thing like this would not be a good idea at the beginning of my last year of college? Um, so yeah, that's kind of been what's happening over the past couple months, is I've been being a student, um, working a lot, studying, um, but still knitting, just not able to uh, really record and document it all as I thought I would a couple months ago. <laughs> but we're here now, and I have been doing quite a lot of knitting. I have all of my things kind of lined up around me, so we're going to go through um, kind of oldest to newest. I just remembered when I cut in because I forgot to talk about what I'm wearing. This is a t-shirt thing that I knit last year out of some extra yarn I had. Um, this is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted, um, and this is when I bought this when I was first getting into wool yarn. Um, and this was what I thought was the cheapest option for me um, before I discovered drops. Um, and so I would just go on Knit Picks and buy, you know, bulk in when they had sales. <laughs> so that's what this, this black color is called Bittersweet Heather. I remember that. And it went on sale, so I bought a bunch of that. And this beige-ish, brownish color is called Crane Heather. I also bought a bunch of that on sale. And then I don't remember what this red color is. Um, so last year the plan for Christmas was Christmas frogs. I made everyone in my family a frog. And so the red was bought around to then to make a sweater for a frog. And then these I had bought a bunch of because I knew I was going to make clothing out of them. And then I had just kind of a random amount of lots of different colors left and ended up with this. It's kind of based on a drops pattern. I know it's on my Ravelry, but I don't remember exactly what it's called. Um, I just shortened the sleeves and I think the pattern calls for a folded over neckline, but I cast on kind of tight so that doesn't really work and I'm okay with turtlenecks. This yarn is a bit scratchy and it's kind of just a weird form factor, like the short sleeve wool kind of tight fitted shirt. It also is a little bit um, tight, a little bit high on my waist. So that's kind of where my natural waist is. These are really high waisted pants. Um, and so I can't wear it with a lot of jeans that aren't really, that don't really hit my actual natural waist. Um, so I don't actually wear this very much. And I'm honestly kind of thinking about frogging it and trying to figure out something else to do with this yarn. Um, because I don't wear it that much, but I just haven't got around to it because I have so many other projects. Um, so it's existing in my closet for now, and I kind of wanted to wear it for this because then I would have um, it on video evidence if I ever wanted to get rid of it. So that's this little interjection before I get into the projects. So I'll send you back to then. I guess we'll start with something I talked about in my first video, which um, I may finished one of these pairs of socks um, before that video. One of these pairs, one of these socks, and now I have the, the full pair complete. So these are just a couple of little ankle socks um, made out of Drops Fable in the color gray, um, and they're really cozy. I've been wearing them a lot. I have never washed them because they're wool. Um, they're pilling a little bit on the backs because they rub. I wear loafers and they rub into the loafers, the heels, but um, they've been great. I love knitted socks, I have decided. Um, they're excellent. Um, there's not much else to say about them besides I like them a lot. Um, I guess I just wish they were a little bit longer because they are quite warm, so 
I don't love my ankles being exposed in the winter. I don't know how people do that. Um, I cannot deal with that. So I usually wear them over another pair of longer socks. Like I wear knee socks a lot and then these will just go on my feet to keep my feet extra warm. So that's those. The next project, which was also mentioned, well, I guess I should do one of these first. There's two things in my lap. They are kind of similar. Um, I had cast on the sold by Handmade by Florence and was a little bit iffy about where I was with it. Um, I think I used smaller needles than she recommended and I don't know. It was, uh, I wasn't feeling great about it when it was on my needles. It seemed kind of tight and so it was going kind of slowly, but you know, it's been a couple of months, so <laughs> I'm <laughs> glad to say that I finished it in that time, in that all that time that I had. Oh boy, the bottom looks weird. Um, so here it is. It's all done. It's all completed. Um, I've got... It fits. It actually fits really nicely. The sides for one issue, which is the straps. The straps are a little bit too long, and so my bra tends to peek out like here when I do wear it um, on its own. I have been wearing it more so over turtlenecks as like a layering piece because I do that a lot. <laughs> um, and I like it that way. Uh, there's also something else going on with it, which is there's like sometimes you can see this line along the bottom of it, kind of here. So I was initially center pulling this yarn, which is Drops Saffron, Saffron in the color chalk. Um, but it's cotton yarn, and it so it kind of um, separates really easily, and so I was getting a lot of separation because you know when you center pull, um, you're kind of pulling opposite to the way that the um, yarn is twisted, and so it will unravel a little bit, and so I was getting a bunch of that, and so this first bit I was <laughs> I think that's why this line is here is I was center pulling. It's really hard to see. It's in some pictures I have. Um, I was center pulling it because it's cast on from the bottom edge and then I realized that I would just be easier if I did the outside of the skein and then I switched to a different a new skein and then I think that's what created the kind of line in it which you really cannot see on camera. But I notice it and it's just an interesting result of twist. I don't know. I spin a little bit, so I've watched a couple videos about, oh, don't center pull your yarn and all that sort of thing, but I don't know. Is it a big deal? No, but would I rather there not be some line that kind of shows up sometimes when I take pictures in this? Yes. I think it might be that line, actually. Can you see? No, you can't. <laughs> oh well. Well, this is the, pa this is the, the completed piece. Um, it's pretty cropped at the bottom. I can't really show you that, but, um, I like it. I didn't end up progging it. Um, I'm glad I continued on. The pattern's really nice. It's by Handmade by Florence. It'll be in the description. Um, I am waiting for the shorts to come out, because originally I wanted to... Handmade by Florence, I talked about this in the back, in the other... the last episode, I think, um, but she was making a pair of shorts that would kind of match this. So I have 11 skeins of this yarn, and I think this took, I want to say like two and a half, if even. Um, so I have a lot left, and I did cast on another project in this yarn because I figured that I would have way more than enough if she ever did release this, the shorts. Um, but I'm not even going to show that project in this video because it's just completely... It's on a piece of scrap yarn right now. I'm not working on it at all. It's on my Ravelry if you're interested. There's no pictures of it, but like what it is, it's on there. A secret mystery. If you wanna go check that out, but otherwise this is the only thing I've made out of this yarn so far. I have a lot left. So that is the Petal Drop Camisole by Handmade by Florence. I wish I would was wearing it more. I haven't actually been wearing it that much. Um, probably because if I feel like putting a white layering piece on over a turtleneck, I usually actually go to this next piece that I finished. Um, so this is the Hakuji Pullover by... I 
don't remember her name. I think it's IrimiMTL on Instagram. Let me just check. I've got my thing here. It's by Irishimizu. Um, This is the Hakuji pullover I made using the yarn that I showed. Ooh, the lighting's not great. In the last video. You can't really see it in this lighting. That sucks. Um, it is a really cool, um, like, light, super light um, pullover. It's actually designed with sleeves. I did not knit the sleeves because the way that I've been wearing it, I've mostly just been wearing it over turtlenecks, and so it's just kind of like a fun piece to go on top. Um, this is the inside, technically. It is reversible, so that was the pearl side, and then this is the stockinette side, if you can see. Um, this yarn is lovely. Um, it is the Shibui Knits uh, Lunar, which I don't think they sell anymore, but I got on sale at a yarn store. I still have two skeins of it. This itself took about two skeins to make, and I have two skeins left over, so maybe someday I'll knit the sleeves. I don't really feel like it right now because I have a lot of other projects going on, and I like where it is and what I can use it for. Um, but yeah, it was a fun knit. I've never knit the kind of um, top down where you knit the one side and go back and pick up stitches for the front. This one was really nice because the the neckline's square, so you didn't even have to like pick up the two sides separately. You pick up one side, knit across, uh, cast on stitches across, and then pick up the other side, which I love. I hate cutting yarn. <laughs> um, um, so that was really fun. And it's super light, super flowy, really pretty. I have to be careful with it because I'm kind of a messy person. I spill things, and I don't want to spill anything on this because it will stay there forever. But that's the Hakuji pullover, um, which is more of a Hakuji top in my case. Um, let's see, what do we have next? So after that, I was really just waiting on yarn to come in. So it was around my birthday that I finished those pieces, and for my birthday I got some wool warehouse um, gift cards from my family because I told them I wanted yarn. And of course, some of this yarn, some of the gift cards um, were going to buy yarn that I was going to use to make gifts for them. Um, but as I was waiting to receive my yarn order for my birthday, I had to finish up, finish up. I had to figure out what I was going to knit in between. Um, so I can't actually remember what I started first. I think we'll go over this first actually, because I think I did start this before um, the next thing I'm gonna show. This is one sock. <laughs> this is, uh, also made out of the same yarn that I used to make my socks. This is the yarn that I bought for my dad's cardigan. Um, so his Christmas gift this year is a gray cardigan. I showed it in my last video. This is going to make a little bit of sound <laughs> as I talk because there are still stitch markers in that in here, which I will explain in a bit. So I bought there was extras of that yarn, so I figured I could make him socks out of the sock yarn. Um, and so I think I had like three skeins, used one of those skeins to make the two socks for myself, and then I'm going to use the other two skeins to make socks for him. Um, so this is just kind of a standard sock. Um, the pattern is the Trails End Pattern by Drops Design. It's, again, a pretty standard sock. I did make some modifications, so... Um, they're using a variegated yarn, I think, and a just a non-variegated yarn for there. And then they did, I think they did do like cuff, but you can't really tell. Um, so the the cuff and the toe are contrast. These are um, I actually dyed this yarn myself. I dyed a little bit of like the leftovers of one of the skeins I had used on the cardigan black to using writ dye to make the contrast toe and cuff. I also added 
a slip stitch heel um, because I know my dad is going to be a little bit rough on his socks. So hopefully that will, um, you know, keep them alive a little bit longer. So I actually did, there's a slip, it's a slip stitch along the back here as when I knit down. And then when I picked up stitches, you cannot tell. <laughs> um, along here as well, I also did um, slip stitch. So the slip stitch kind of continues along here and kind of along the diagonal to where you um, do the decreases. Um, so I think it'll be super sturdy. This sock was knit one at a time, if you can't tell. So these <laughs> stitch markers in the bottom are just me measuring, me keeping track of how many rows I did in the foot, because what I actually did was I knit this, I knit the leg, the heel, and then I got to the foot portion and just kind of kept knitting. And then I went home for Thanksgiving and had my dad try it on, and so I had to actually rip some out, and then I could put the toe on. So I made sure that they fit perfectly. So I wasn't actually keeping track of rows when I was knitting, so that's what these stitch markers are here for now um because i counted like every 10 rows and put in a stitch marker so now i know for the next sock how many rows to knit so that's pretty much everything about this sock um which is actually my dad's birthday present which isn't till next year <laughs> but it's um in january so it's pretty shortly after christmas so i did want to get a head start on that and then what I think I actually did next was, I think still kind of waiting for uh, the wool warehouse and to be able to get new yarn, I made a little set. So that was, you could hear that, that was the sock falling down. <laughs> so this is a little tiny, tiny baby scarf and a little set of wrist warmers. Um, I've never made anything like this before, but I live in a pretty cold state for college, so I figured it would be pretty helpful. Um, and so this was really, I wore these a lot during autumn. This pattern is also by Drops. It's on my Ravelry. I made a bunch of modifications because they were using a lace pattern that didn't actually line up um, when you repeated it, like it would be slightly jogged. And I did not enjoy that. So I switched, I kind of used the, the stitch count, but on the back of these is just a braid, a cable braid, um, which is hard to see because it's so fluffy. Um, and then this is a little scarf. Um, the pattern is from, I don't remember. The fun thing about this scarf is that the day after my birthday, I just sat down and made this entire thing. It took maybe, I definitely have it written down on my Ravelry, let me see. Um, it took like an afternoon, and this is actually the Firebird Scarf by Black Cat Knitting Company, that's the pattern. It was free originally, I think you have to pay for it now, but I just looked up a scarf pattern and that's what came up. And then I added a little crochet scalloped border to the end of that, kind of matches this <laughs> well. So this, all of these were made using one skein of drops brushed alpaca silk in the color light gray. So all of these, my, uh, my little wrist warmers and the scarf, were all made using one skein. And this is how much I have left, which, I mean, kind of looks like, I don't know. It's a very small amount. Like, the brushed alpaca silk skeins are only 25 grams, but... Um, you do get quite a lot of yardage, and so this is actually one gram of yarn that I have left. I'm not really sure what I can do with it, maybe make something for a frog. Um, but I've been saving this to show off. A <laughs> little bit left. So that's what I made next, and these came in handy a lot. They actually didn't come as much in handy as um, the state that I'm going to college in, as they did at home because the heating in my room at home is broken so um and it does get kind of cold there so it was like 50 ish degrees in my room at home and so my hands were kind of freezing and i was wearing these inside the house 
Um, so very helpful in that respect. Not what I was anticipating needing them for though. So that's all on those. I kind of can't wear them anymore because I, my, it's too cold. <laughs> my fingers will freeze if I'm not wearing something to cover them at college. So can't really use those anymore. The next object um, has a bit of a long story to go along with it. So I got my wool warehouse order, um, which included all of the supplies I needed to make everyone in my family socks. And some other things, of course, but um, yeah. We had frogs, we had um, whatever they wanted, which mostly ended up being sweaters and one hat. And then the next round of presents is socks because I am getting really into sock knitting. So my mom's socks, which are actually for Christmas because her birthday is before Christmas, um, I got this book. I should give credit. I was at a bookstore and I knew I wanted to get more into knitting socks. So I was looking at the knitting pattern books they had at the used bookstore. And I ended up with this, which is um, Around the World in Knitted Socks by Stephanie Vanderlinden. I don't think this book is actually in print anymore, um, so, but I got it for six bucks at a used book superstore. Um, and it has so many beautiful sock patterns. That was my post-it notes falling out. Um, so I gave my mom the option of either choosing a pattern from the Drops Design website or a pattern from this book. And so she went with this Vacation in the Mountains, which has a bunch of um, really complicated um, twisted stitches, um, like moving stitches around. Uh, these have some post-it notes on them, but those are the charts. I can really see what they're what they are, so I'm not sharing the pattern. But yeah, these socks are a real doozy. So I guess I think I'll start with the one that I actually have finished. Um, I did finish one of these socks. It has taken <laughs> like a couple months to finish the sock um, to get to this point. I kind of wanted to do the same thing that I did with my dad's sock, where I knitted the leg, the heel, and then just this part, and then had her try them on. But what happened was this sock book recommends knitting a size, um, the smaller size on size zero needles and the bigger size on size one needles. So, this is me casting it on with size one needles. And I got to the heel and I decided to try it on. And you know, I thought, wasn't sure about this because um, it looks kind of small. And so I tried it on and it fit my foot like perfectly, which is an issue because I have smaller feet than my mom. So smaller feet and smaller calves. So I, <laughs> it pained me Pained me enough that I didn't actually um, rip out this sock, um, but I had to start a new one on, those are on size one, these are on size one and a half. Um, I know I'm a pretty tight knitter. Um, I actually knit my dad's socks on size two needles because I knew I was a tight knitter and I wasn't sure if I was going to get uh, the gauge correct if I actually used my smaller needles. Um, so those I knitted on my size two, which are part of my interchangeable set. This is actually a, my um, zero, one, and one and a half needles are my specifically sock needles that I magic loop on. Um, so I had to go up to my biggest set of sock needles, um, 1.5, which is actually bigger than the pattern. The one nice thing is that I actually bought three skeins of this yarn because the um, pattern recommended I think 100 grams, but given that I was, I knew I was going to have to knit probably um, up and I really didn't want to run out of yarn, I did end up buying three skeins of this yarn. So the current plan is that I finished this sock and had this much yarn left, so I know I can get a full sock out of one skein of yarn. So I have, this is actually <laughs> The last skein of yarn, which is for the second actual sock that I'm going to give to my mom, and this is the first sock that I started making, 
which was the first skein of yarn. Second was the finished sock. And I am going to... We'll see how I feel if I want to make four of these socks, because they're really complicated. Um, really pretty, though. But I might do another wool warehouse order where I just order another skein of this yarn and then make myself a pair of these socks. And I did like these socks when I got the book initially, so I was kind of interested in knitting them for myself, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to knit more than one pair, but that's where we are. Um, something interesting about this is that it's actually made for... It's, the pattern is written um, for knitting on three double-pointed needles. So the way I actually have my magic loop set up, the cables are a little bit tight, is that I have two loops going on. And so there's actually actually a triangle in there. So I can get the... Because um, there's three pattern, three charts going around the leg. So that means I don't have to worry about like crossing them or like reading half of a chart, which is really nice. And this is kind of a weird way. I'm not sure I've ever seen anyone do this, but I also haven't seen a lot in the sock knitting space. So if anyone, I don't know if that's a helpful tip for people. It's kind of amplifying what people don't like about Magic Loop, but I don't have DPNs this small. And this is working just fine. It's also another great use of... Um, I was complaining a little bit in the last episode, I think, I, that I didn't need 40 inch circulars in order to make socks. Um, but this is kind of, I don't think I could do this on smaller circulars. So another reason that I, to get 40 inch circulars, besides maybe knitting two at a time, which maybe I should be doing for this sock. Maybe I'll, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll knit the other one up to here when I knit myself this pair and then do it two at a time from there. That could be something to ease the pain. But yeah, that's the long saga of these socks. I'm so glad to have one of them done, and I think I'm going to be able to finish the other one by Christmas. Um, I guess I should talk about the yarn. This is Drops Nord in the shade Old Pink. Um, Drops Nord is the drop sock yarn that has some alpaca in it, and it's really nice. I do enjoy it. Um, I would recommend. I guess I haven't tested it for wear yet, but this color is also really nice. Um, my mom kind of refers to these socks as her onion socks now, because <laughs> they do kind of look a little bit like onions. Maybe like Christmas ornaments. I don't know. Whatever they are, I still think they're really pretty. Um, they're pretty thick because of all of the cables going on. Cables? I don't know. They're not really cables, they're like twisted stitches. Um, but you kind of work them like cables, but like one side is always your... your I don't know. <laughs> they're cables. You just pull it purling one side. Um, so yeah, as I said before, that's all about these socks. The last big thing kind of the only big thing that I have to show that I'm currently working on is this. <laughs> um, this is the seagull sweater. I don't know if it's, it's probably actually called that, but it, that's what I've been calling it. Um, by Ruth Sorensen. I found it on Ravelry. I need to do some untangling here. Um, this is I think this would be considered Fair Isle. It's a definitely stranded color work, um, and this is the first stranded color work that I've ever done. Um, so it's been a little bit of a learning process. So you can kind of see I'm just like two rows away from the first pattern repeat of the seagull itself. And so there's one seagull. There are four seagulls on each side of the sweater, and um, I'm very excited about where this is going. So I am a fan of soccer, specifically Brighton and Hove Albion um, Football Club in the Premier League, and they are 
Um, their mascot is the seagull, so kind of in honor of them. And also I just like birds. I wanted to make this sweater. Um, it is going to take so long, I think. I have not been working on this very much recently because I have been trying to get socks done for Christmas. Um, but it takes me maybe 20 minutes to do a row. I don't know. I watched like two half episodes of a TV show. So it's going to take a while for me to finish with this. But it is made in Drops Flora, which is another wool alpaca blend. And it's pretty thin because it is um, like fingering weight yarn. Um, still like double layered because of the um, stranded color work. But I think it's going to be a really nice sweater when it's done. I cannot wait to wear this. It's going to be super warm. I always get really warm in alpaca. Um, and so even though it's kind of thin, I think it's a perfect weight to like throw on over a shirt and just be warmed to the point of sweating, I think. Um, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited to get all of my other projects done so I can just kind of work on this consistently. Um, I really like this um, what it, uh, ribbing at the bottom because <laughs> the pearls are um, white and the knits are gray and it has this super cool look. I think it'll be super fun. This is also a steaked sweater, which is going to be my first time doing that. It doesn't look too complicated, um, so I think it will be okay and I, I think this will felt pretty well. So I'm not too worried about that, but I have quite a long way to go before that was... That is going to become an issue for me. Um, there's like many pattern repeats of the seagulls, which is great because the more the merrier, but yeah, I'm very excited about this. Um, I actually made this little ring thing so I could, you know, properly separate out my um, colors. I still am having a little bit of trouble with um, like my main and my background color, I think. I'm using the white as the main color right now because I saw that it would like make it pop more, I think. But like, I don't know, sometimes when there's a single stitch in the white, it gets kind of buried. I did block the bottom of this earlier, and I think that that fixed so many problems. That was, I've never, <laughs> blocking helps a lot, but I've never had something block like, and become as, like, and fix so many things as with this. So, blocking, extremely necessary for everything, I would say, but I guess especially for color work stuff like this. Um, I just think it's so cool. I'm so excited about this, and I wish I could work on it more. It is a much bigger project, because usually I carry on my socks and like this, um, but since, you know, two colors of yarn. I have them in this plastic bag with the middle bit <laughs> closed so they can't twist because tensioning from like wrapping it around my fingers to tension and using the ring, still a little bit of issues. I've figured out a method that I'm okay with right now um, that I think I'll continue using, but otherwise just a lot. <laughs> um, so We've kind of gone through everything that I've been working on, and that's kind of all included the yarn that I recently acquired, except for one thing. So I'm gonna get that. I forgot. It's actually two things. Um, so the one person in my family that I have not mentioned yet is my brother, and he is actually also getting his own pair of socks. He had a lot more input into the socks. Um, and so he chose these colors. Well, he sent me screenshots of colors he wanted, and I found the closest sock yarn colors that I could. So this is, um, Cascade Yarn, Her Cascade Yarn's Heritage, um, in the color, I think it's called Dusty Turquoise. I think? Maybe. <laughs> that might have been the other one I was looking at. But the color number is 5763. Um, so he wanted a teal color, and he also wanted a brown. 
This is also Drops Nord in, it looks like caramel, but the color number is 23. I don't know what that corresponds to. It just, the color itself looks like the color of caramel, so they didn't name it caramel. It was a missed opportunity, but I, I think it might be named caramel. So I think I'm, I'm just gonna knit him a regular pair of socks, and then I told him that I could do some color work for him, and so I sent him like a picture of what color work looks like, and he designed his own, and I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then a couple months, like a month later, I looked at it again, and I was like, this is like single dots of color on a completely like white background. And so I was like, this is not going to be fun to color work, like it's going to be mostly, um, it's not gonna look good. So I think I'm just gonna duplicate stitch it on and then make the socks with this and then duplicate stitch it on with this, which means I will be ver using very little of this. And kind of my original plan was tr hopefully using very little of this to the point where I could also use it like with these socks to make a pair of ankle socks for myself. And I think that'll probably be possible given I'm going to duplicate stitch it on. I just have to be careful about the tension. Um, so that's my brother's socks. I have a bunch of yarn for other projects, um, mainly the seagull sweater. And then I also have this, which is Drops Nord in the color Blush. Um, this is the same color I made my mom, my mom's sweater out of that she, she got for her birthday. Um, and I also made myself a vest out of the leftover yarn from that sweater, and it's a beautiful color. And so I wanted to buy some yarn to make some socks to match that vest, because I wear that vest a lot, because um, it's also it's made out of Drops Nepal, so it's the same kind of um, wool alpaca blend, and it gets me, it keeps me so warm. And I also just really like the way that I knitted that vest, and I think it looks nice with a lot of stuff. So, at some point in the future, I'll make myself my own pair of socks that I choose um, the pattern of. <laughs> that's what I'll use this yarn for, but at this point, that seems pretty far off. So. I think that's all the yarn acquisitions, technically. Um, well, I do have a couple more things. I guess I'll go get them. So no other big orders, but I did go to... Uh, I like thrift shopping a lot, and so I went to a Goodwill recently, probably like a month ago at this point, and they actually had yarn there. And it was mostly acrylic yarn. Um, trust me. I sorted through it <laughs> multiple times just to make sure. But they did have two things. So one of them was this Lamb's Pride Worsted, which is a wool mohair blend. I found this funny because I've actually used um, yarn from the Brown Sheep Company before, which I don't see, a, like, they're not like a craft store brand, so I'm not used to them. But I did get some yarn from my mom that had a kit. Um, of the blue dress that I made. That's how my Ravelry is also made out of yarn from the Brown Sheep Company. But that is a cotton, I think it's called Cotton Top. It's a cotton wool blend. Um, so this, I tried to look it up online. I think this usually goes for like $16. Um, I still have the Goodwill tag on it. It was $3 <laughs> for me, which is an amazing deal. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna make out of it, but I think upon reflecting, about the little gloves that I made. I need some very warm mittens. So I think that's what I'm going to use this yarn for, is making some really warm, fuzzy mittens to keep my hands nice and toasty once it starts getting to below freezing temperatures. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I bought was, this came in a pack with some um, fiber fill. It was, I think, a, like a, a kit to make a lion, but this is a 100% wool yarn as well. It's also 100 grams. This is 113 grams because it's American company. It's four ounces. Um, this is 100 grams of unspecified wool that I figured I could use to make something. Maybe like a balaclava? I do have a, an acrylic balaclava that I wear a lot. Once it gets super cold, but you can never have too many balaclavas. <laughs> um, 
I don't even know if it's enough yarn to make that. Maybe just a scarf. I need like a thinner scarf that is also warm. We'll see. It's a nice brown color. I figured I could use it for something. And also this was, I think it was five dollars. So not as not as good a deal as this, which is wool and mohair, but wool yarn for five dollars. You can't say no. Um I think that's everything. Um Yeah, I think that's everything. I hope it was somewhat interesting to listen to. Um, all of the information about the projects and the yarn, the patterns, will be in the description. Um, you know, hopefully it won't take me, like, three months to record another episode, but I honestly <laughs> don't know. Um, we'll see. But I will always still be knitting. So, thank you for watching.